What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Airship Kingdoms Adrift. I actually like this game. I think this game is really, really cool. I skipped out on it about a month ago when the game came out because the developers messed up and they put up the wrong branch. And so I played for like four or five hours on the wrong branch that they posted thinking that it was the 1.0 and it actually was not that much fun. The game was kind of a mess. And then three or four days later, they were like, whoopsie daisy. And then they put the actual 1.0 up for everybody to play. And so now that I've been playing the 1.0 for four or five hours, I've been having a lot of fun with this sandbox sky pirate game. In a lot of ways, it kind of reminds me of Sid Meier's Pirates. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Age of Pirates, actually, if you've ever played that game. Uh, it's a game where you've got weapons on, like, the cardinal directions of your vehicles, and you're going to be firing torpedoes and doing gnarly stuff like that, and you're going to be shipping things and building things and having all kinds of fun on that front. And so I figured I'd show you the mayhem that I'm getting up to before too long. What you're seeing right now is one of the game's aerial battles that takes place from time to time. I'm fighting an enemy pirate freighter right now uh, that is kind of like up inside my business. There we go. Let's fire some cannon blasts at him. Cannon blasts will do it. There we go. Get him fitted on up. And so this guy has been cruising through the territory that I'm currently occupying. And I don't like it when there's pirates around here, all right? So let's check the game out. Let's play for about 30 minutes. Let's figure out whether or not this is a game that you wanted to play for yourself or whether it was a game that you wanted to pass on. If after watching this, if you wanted to get the game for yourself, you can go get that down below in the description. On top of that, you can also check down there for a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. I'd love to have you. I spend a lot more time making content over there uh, than I do over here. Like it takes me like four or five hours to make a video over here too. But, like, you know, I'm live the whole time over there, and you see the whole thing. Hey, we got ourselves a surrender right there. Good. Take that, you filthy pirate. And we'd accepted their flag as ours. Well, let's see if we got any good loot. We got a fuel tank, and we got a personal sword. A couple of them. Not really that great a loot. But, you know, the skies are a little bit safer. There's a few less pirates around here. There's a little bit less mayhem transpiring. Uh, what am I up to right now? I'm actually doing shipping contracts right now. I signed up in this game. So at the beginning of the game, you pick a class. Um, and the game has actually a pretty well-developed storyline, in case you were wondering. But you pick a class at the beginning of the game. And the class that you pick at the beginning of the game determines what you have a letter for. So I have a letter of Mark, which means that I can do law enforcement missions, and I can fight pirates, and I can do all that kind of stuff. But if you start out as a trader, you start out with a trade license, which allows you to take, like, bigger commissions to move things in between ports and do drayage. If you start out with a manufacturing license... That uh, means that you start out with the ability to build buildings and towns and create facilities that will create things like guns and ships and stuff like that, just in case you wanted to make them yourself. We've got a freighter over there, free trader thugs, and a gunboat, huh? A medium freighter might be a little bit hefty for us to deal with. What do these guys have going on? A frigate and a corvette. I don't think I want to do that. I've just got two corvettes right now. So this is a ship of mine. That's another ship of mine. This guy right here hasn't really been fighting too well. I think I need to like, I don't know. I think I need to like come up with a better battle plan for him. I wish the game had RTS controls where I could like rubber band box him and tell him what I want him to do. But you can only give him like a personality over here. And honestly, I think he's going to need some more engines and stuff too because it seems like he flies kind of slow compared to all the guys that we're going up against. We got two light freighters over here. We might be able to handle that. Yeah, let's go knock on the door of these freighters over here and see if we can get into trouble. Are they the closest ones? They are not, so we're going to hit this group in front with the frigate first. Okay, never mind. There are, like, a lot of pirates in this game. They're going to crowd you a lot of the time. The reputation in this system in this game isn't super well developed. So basically, all of these ships that are orbiting around me right now that you're seeing spawn all the time, they just spawn out of thin air because, like, I've killed a bunch of pirates. And every time you kill a pirate, you pick up, like, this flag that says, like, a flag of, you know, like, dishonor or something like that. Uh, effectively meaning that you've dishonored the pirates, and so now they're coming after you. The problem with that is that they spawn incessantly, like, all around you, getting in the way of things that you're trying to do. And, and so anyways, you're going to spend a lot of time, like, ducking them and trying to stay around them once you've killed a couple pirates. I should probably pick up another escort. I've got more than enough gun or more than enough money right now to actively do it. But I've got a quest that I've got to do. This game is actually narratively based as well. There's a lot of sandbox gameplay here. But the game is also heavily based on narrative. 
Uh, every single one of these characters that are like your support characters, like your first mates and your gunners and like your lieutenants and stuff like that, uh, these guys all have their own personal storyline and they level up as you go through their personal storyline. I've been working on Jean Donadieu's for like the last three or four hours and I've done a big chunk of his first mission uh, that's almost done. And it's well written. I mean, like, so the bad guys in this game are kind of like mustache twirling. You know what I mean? They're the kind of guys that just like machine gun settlements for no reason. But at the end of the day, the voice acting's actually been pretty good. And so in Donadue's quest right now, we're, I've gone back to my boss's office. I work for like a, like a Dutch East India company type trading conglomerate. And so anyways, I've been running around doing her random quests for a while. And we're finally coming back home to maybe get a paycheck. Let's find out. You were away for a lot longer than I expected. I assume you have a story to tell. Aye, ma'am. We picked up the cargo and ferried them to Crossington, as fell your instruction. But when we were about to leave, a sink bird landed in the harbor master's office. Since Crossington wasn't ready to take on a search and rescue, we thought... And what did you get out of this? I hope you did not do this out of pure altruism, yes? No, ma'am. We found a survivor and delivered her to her employer. Saxon Standard gave us some reward as well. Good initiative, Jean. You remembered what I told you when. The audio didn't bug out right there. I accidentally clicked like, twice. I, I know it didn't say the dialogue right there. I don't want anybody to blame the game. My mouse double clicked on accident. That aside, how goes it with the pirates, ma'am? That depends. Did you by any chance sink a pirate ship flying a grey and burnt color while carrying those pillows? Nothing of the sort, ma'am. Then they are still out there. All three of them, presumably. While you were away, Brunhild got the informant in Blueglade and delivered him here. Higgs, this is already here, ma'am? Siggy must be happy. She's the first to arrive, so I put her to work as we wait for the others. Took some soft persuasion for him to talk about this operation. He was cooperative, actually. I would too if it's Brunhild who caught me. They run quite a complex operation. Two ships take turn robbing, then deposit their loot onto a third ship in hiding. So, militias will have a hard time identifying them, is it? They are effective and smart, but this has to end. Getting rid of them should help us reinforce our influence on Blueglade too. So, we are doing this for gratitude, ma'am? Call it an investment of goodwill. Now, go hunt them all down before they flee. There you go. We've been given a pirate hunter mission. And apparently the quest reward for this one is that I get a free gunboat. So that's pretty cool, dude. That'll fill out. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to use a gunboat for. I'm kind of like four or five hours into the game. I'm at the point where enemies kind of like are big and chunky. They tend to be like frigates or larger. And so we can take a look at the shipyard, though, and we can see if they've got anything over here. They have a bronze drake that's kind of, like, overpriced, and I wouldn't be able to, like, outfit it properly. We could pick up another lindworm, which is what I currently am piloting. Once again, though, it's at a 30% markup, so you're paying about 9000 over market price for that right there. So it's a pretty pricey go. This is the parts store right here. You can buy parts uh, for all of the ships that you currently own. I will show you what the dry dock looks like as well. This is the ship fitting menu right here. And in fact, I need to mess with my firing arcs. There we go. Line all those up. There we go. Now we're good. All right. So basically, I want this one to be activated only for broadsides and this one for everything. Because the game uses kind of like an auto-targeting system. It's kind of hard to describe until you play the game. But anyways, it like locks on. Some weapons, like these torpedoes on the front, they have to be lead. And then the ones on the sides, uh, they can be fired only if they have like a target lock going on. The problem is, since this is manually fired... And these are lock-fired. When you lock-fire these guys with spacebar, which is the contextual trigger button, uh, it will fire your torpedoes off into the ether if you haven't configured your firing groups. And so if I have the torpedoes disabled right here, it just makes controlling the game easier. Because otherwise you have to hold down shift and press WASD to decide what direction you want to fire in. And that precludes you from turning. And that means you can't make complex movements uh, while also maintaining your gunnery. And so that's why I'm fiddling with this. Uh, but if you want to outfit your ship, they are voxels, actually. This game is very, very similar to Airships Conquer the Skies. Uh, every single airship has like armor parts. It has gun parts. It has gunnery posts uh, that will have 
you know. I actually don't know. I guess the gunnery post allows me to have a gunnery officer on board. There's cargo rooms. There's, like, ammo batteries, for example, that you can put things inside of. Uh, you can swap these guns out as you see fit. They do have weight. Your ship will fly faster or slower depending on how many things you've loaded on top of it. If you wanted to look at your other ship and customize that, you just click right there. This is my other ship. My other ship is not fully outfitted right now, so I should probably outfit him to, like, not suck quite so much because he's using, like, iron weapons. So since we've got, like, an influx of cash, I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go to the parts vendor. Uh, one of the big flaws with this game um, is that you can't buy parts from inside the editor. Uh, that's a thing that needs to be implemented about as soon as humanly possible, in my opinion. Oh, they have a ship right here, too. Uh, you can build your own ships, by the way, which is way cheaper if you can collect all the parts from all over the planet from different trade posts and bring them back over here. It's actually a lot cheaper uh, to, to field ships if you're paying for them with just, like, the machine parts. These obviously cost, like, a thousand apiece, but if you can get them as salvage from fights or whatever and just store them up inside your warehouse here, which you do have free warehouse space, by the way. So here's my warehouse. I don't really have too much inside of it right now. But I do have a warehouse, and I'm starting to accumulate oak wood and whatnot, and, like, plates and things like that that could be used for building ships, and, like, luxury wines and stuff like that that you can take to trade around. I'll probably throw a few of the trade goods on me, but actually it looks like you can't buy ship parts here. No, you can buy ship parts here. Never mind, I'm just being dumb. Uh, so, like, what I'd like to see is... I'd like to at least get this guy moved over to steel cannons... But I'm not convinced that they actually have steel cannons. Oh, there they go. They got steel cannons right there. So we'll buy four steel cannons. And let's go ahead and see if we can slap those in real fast. So with those four steel cannons that I've got, uh, we can take those guys out right there. You just right-click. It's very contextual and easy to figure out. Uh, you're going to want to... What is that? What did I just take off this thing? I just yoinked one of my mana drives. Okay, we'll put the mana drive back over there. I think I just yoinked one of my pine wood planks, too. The good news is you can return everything back to previous specification with just a button. Like, all the tools and things that you expect to see here exist. And so what we want to do is we kind of want to, like, cannon this guy out. Uh, we got to get some more guns on here. So I'm going to need a few more guns. But everything is really, really easy to configure. Like, seriously, it's super easy to build ships in this game. It, it takes next to no effort. Like, you just right-click things you want to go away. You left-click things on here, over here. And if you have multiples of them, it'll repeatedly click without you having to hold shift or anything else like that. I don't know if this guy's, like, actually trying to fight with these kinetic lances. I don't think I've seen him shoot the kinetic lance at all the entire time we've been scrumming with the enemy. But then again, he hasn't been very aggressive either. And so, like, I'm a little bit on the fence about whether or not he's going to be able to actually accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. I'm going to replace... What's the difference in weight between... These oak wood plates are 850. How heavy are the pine wood planks? Doesn't matter. We're going to slap them on anyways. Go back to the shipyard. We'll fit this guy on out. I actually waited to fit this guy until you guys were watching for specifically this reason. I just, I figured you guys would like to see the way the shipbuilding works since it is a major feature of the title. Uh, that's going to bring down his speed a little bit. He's definitely a little heavier than he was before, but he is more solidly reinforced by like 400 HP on these sides. It'll help him eat an extra cannonball. One extra cannonball per each one of these panels. We would have to go ironclad if we wanted him to be stronger than that but for now that's fine by me i just want him to be a little bit tougher since they're giving me a gunboat as like a freebie for this quest i think what i'm going to do here is so since they're giving me a freebie gunboat for this quest all right so it looks to me like there's three groups of piraticals that we got to take down around here i've also got something down here i'm gonna go look and see what it is i've got like a flagged quest down there it's impossible for me to tell because this game is like really fun i like it a lot however the game has no quest log so i would strongly suggest playing the game with like a notepad 
or like a piece of paper or something because only major quests are going to show up on the map like minor quests like commissions and things are not going to show up on the map and so like pay attention when you play this game because somehow I get the feeling this development team is new and they've done a really good job and they've managed to like knock it out of the park with a lot of the aspects of this game however that being said there are like these weird little oversights like not having a quest log that make me scratch my head and be like, so why is there no quest log? Like, this is an RPG. That should be like a bare bones basic feature. You know what I mean? And so there, there's a lot of quality of life and things that are missing here that you're just not going to see. Uh, so we've got a belter fugitive over here with two light freighters. We should probably go beat them up. Yeah, let's go. Let's go bully a little bit over here. That's just two gunboats. Oh, this is going to be slaughter. All right, let's go for the gunboats first. I don't know exactly who we're hunting down here or who, like, the important target is. So we're just going to sweep and clear the entire neighborhood and wipe them all out. We're going to kill every single pirate that looks at us wrong. The game seems to have level zones. I would like for these to be indicated on the map uh, with, like, an overlay. There is no overlay for that. But, look, like, different leveled enemies seem to be in different areas. So, like, the city that you start out in, stay around there for a good long time doing, like, little tasks and things. And just, like, moving stuff around and avoiding conflict. Otherwise, there's a pretty strong chance you're going to get absolutely just, like, dookied on super hard. All right. All right, off the battle stations. You always get, like, this little conversational part at the beginning of every fight. Oh, I swap with these with my number keys. Nice. Well, that's convenient. I'm just going to haphazardly fire torpedoes in their direction. And, like, if I hit something, cool. It's not going to matter because, like, once I bring these machine guns to bear, these dudes are about to die, like, instantly. So there you go. Watch these guys melt on their little health bars down here. My ship is really good at killing gunboats. We're not, like, kind of good at killing gunboats. We are basically the gunboat hunter. Like, gunbo gunboats kind of have, like, a time and a place in this game. And it's, like, harassing things that are way, way less agile than they are. And it takes, like, really professional pilot like piloting to do a good job with a gunboat. But it looks like we got some jewelry, and it looks like we got some personal weaponry off of him. In between fights, you may have noticed that our little voxels are changing colors down here. Maybe they were a good soldier once. Kind of sad, don't you think, Commander? Was that one of the guys I was supposed to whack? I'm not even sure what I'm targeting right now, but we've got green belter fugitives over here, so I'm going to go after them next. Uh, I'm going to be playing mostly on 3X this entire time because I feel like we've got a lot of ground to cover with a lot of things to look at. But the game is pretty simple and easy to understand, in all honesty. They've taken a genre that is typically reasonably complicated and, like, difficult to figure out. That is to say, sort of like X3-style games. And honestly, it comes across pretty arcadey. I I'm reasonably happy with the game right now. Like, I could definitely see this being a game that I dump, like, ridiculous amounts of hours into, just kind of, like, screwing around. Oh, one of, our, one of our targets is over there, too. Good, we can just ping-pong in between the two fights. Hopefully they don't add on in. These light freighters over here shouldn't be that big of a threat. We should be able to kind of, like, crap down their neck holes, no problem. But you never know, man. Sometimes somebody's got a really cool build in this game. And it can be a little bit of a... Did we hit those? We hit those. Nice, dude. Keep firing at him. Give it a little bit of an angle. Swap back over to one group. He's in range. Let's go ahead and bring up the miniguns on this side. Brrrr. Yeah, you realize you messed up, huh? I, he tried to turn around. I saw that. He tried to turn around. He knew that he made a mistake. He messed with Big Dog. And Big Dog got them fangs, Bruda. Uh, I'll just bring him around for normal broadside cannons over here. I think we should be fine. You want to wait for the green squares uh, to let you know that your aim is good. Otherwise, the vast majority of your bullets are going to miss. Unless you're using a special ability that increases your accuracy artificially. And then you can spam the button as much as you want. So it looks like we killed the flagship and we killed the escort. Looks like we didn't get too much out of it. We got a fuel tank. We got a material crate. These are consumables like health potions that you can use uh, to refill your fuel, your materials, your bullets, stuff like that. Uh, mixed coins right here. This is just pelf. Like this is stuff that they stole from the enemy. Yaper. Uh, it'll be gotten gains. And so it's just a generic trade item in this game that you can sell anywhere. Uh, who's in this next group, though? Who's in this next silver group right here? It's two medium freighters. Ugh. Two medium freighters is pretty bad. I don't know what I want to do about that. Two bronze drakes is going to be kind of nasty. These guys tend to be ironclads. We only have one ironclad. 
I would think that if we picked up like a third guy, maybe. We'd probably be okay on that front. Am I flying around the wrong way again? You are. Sometimes what'll happen is, so with the autopilot, this little idiot will get in your way over and over and over again. Uh, they need to fix the, the way that the AI pilots, basically. Uh, the AI is constantly in your way once you have a fleet, and they get in the way of your auto travel and stuff all the time. I don't know if we're, if we're going to like live through this fight. Um, this might get really, really bad. It says that it's a level 4 fight, but I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Level 4 fight seems optimistic with two ironclads. Well, we'll see how this goes. Uh, we'll bring her on in. And I'm going to I'm gonna try to torp her up. Like, I'm going to let him kind of, like, do his thing and start laying into this guy while I kind of, like, gunboat from back here. Unfortunately, with my left side lined up the way that it is, I think they're both lining up for broadsides on me. Let's go ahead and get his accuracy up. The last thing we want to do... Oh, I guess different ships have different armor, so I guess it must imply the gear. These guys are going down pretty fast. So I guess they are like level fours. The thing is, I haven't been able to figure out where the game tells me what level I am. So, like, I never know how to compare, like, my item and gear level to, like, what the enemy is fielding. So eventually what I have to do is I just need to, like, manual save and hope for the best. Uh, that happens to me all the time. What we're going to try to do right here... Because we're going to try to guide this guy back to our other ship so that he can land more shots. And then we're going to come around with the one grouping. And we're going to try to just, you know, we're going to try to just pepper him up a little bit. Very nice. Big, beautiful, exaggerated damage numbers. That's what I like to see. I actually think these guys are much weaker to cannons than they are to machine guns. So we may want to start using cannons on him. Yeah, the cannon fusillade is actually doing a lot better. A lot more damage there. Okay. Uh, so I've been taking into account every single gun in this game has like a, a principal damage method, effectively. Uh, so like piercing, blunt, explosive, that kind of stuff. I'm guessing these guys are kind of resistant to my machine gun fire. So while the right side of my ship is really efficient at killing gunboats and things... Not so efficient at killing anybody that's got, like, a big solid chunking of armor right there. We need to get him more engines because he's too slow. Either that or we need to remove some weapons uh, from the ship so that he flies a little bit faster. I guess I did up armor him, too. It seems like he's having trouble keeping up with the enemy. Come on, finish him. You're firing to the right side right there. Man, this guy's really taking a beating right now. Uh, you do have crew. You can do boarding actions in this game. Uh, you can capture ships, but apparently it's a really, really low chance to capture ships from what I've been told. Uh, so, you know, my energy's draining off pretty hard right now. There we go. We finally got him, man. And we've got ourselves a prisoner. Very nice. All right, so we've got Pern Mills Wanted Prisoner, and we got the Free Trader's Mark. Good. Uh, we're almost out of ammunition, which is pretty brutal. I need to get, like, a bigger, chunkier ship. Uh, we got really bad loot right there, so I can only hope that this quest pays well because I spent more on ammunition on that fight uh, than I earned from killing that guy, which is kind of a bummer. I guess I could throw an ammo crate at it to take the edge off. Uh, what else do we need to do around here? It actually looks like there's not much else to do except go back to town and report to our boss that we were just an unholy ass kicker. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's fly back on over that way, and we'll see what we can get done. So inside of Pern Mill here, let's go ahead and descend. I love the scenery in this game, by the way. Uh, some of the areas that you go to are remarkably beautiful. I haven't flown all over the map yet, but I've flown pretty far. And every single location kind of has, like, different things that they specialize in. You can find that by clicking on them. So you can see that the map is that large. And in the four or five hours that I have played, I have gone over to there, and then I have sailed all the way down to there. And that's pretty much as far as I've gone. Other than that, I've been doing quests kind of like in this region, just like earning money so that I can kind of like punch out my fleet and get nicer stuff. Oh, the marshal. Got, I got it. Apparently that was for a quest that I picked up at some point a while back. I thought that was for our main quest, but this was just a side job. Cool. Sounds good, man. 7,000 bucks is 7,000 bucks. Uh, this is... 
if you're if you're a trader or a manufacturer guy, you can't interact with law enforcement until you buy a license. And so, anyways, uh, good work, absolutely. Your lads are the real deal. Uh, didn't you say you wanted to use you didn't want to use violence if you didn't have to? Like a civilized person? Uh, yes, I'll ask them nicely. Don't worry about it. I have another request for you, lads. Come back here after you're done with Agatha's work. Okay, cool. Sounds good. But as I was saying, each of the locations in this game has like a thing that it does. If you click on it, you can see what services exist inside that location. And you can figure out what facilities they have available. Uh, so, for example, if you go to Silver Bloom, actually, let's go for something a little bit better. Uh, so, Sunstrip Town, it says that it's an agricultural town. And as you can see here, it has plantations, uh, agro agrologists, and uh, you've got mills over here. So, these guys produce food, which means chances are, if you buy stuff from them in Sunstrip, and then you take it down to, like, let's say, Everspring, uh, which is basically the capital of the kingdom... Chances are you'll make decent money down there, but to know for sure, you would have to, like, buy a couple of them and sail down there and just kind of, like, see what happens. Like I said, play this game with a notepad. There's a lot of things to keep track of while you're playing the game. And so I've been keeping a little loose kind of three-ring binder on the desk while I play the game to just kind of, like, mentally keep track of, like, prices and stuff like that. Luckily, it hasn't been that important because I'm not a trader. I'm a combat pilot, so I'm a combat captain. But anyways... So back out into the sky, we've got a bunch of pirates out here that we've got to deal with. Um, unfortunately, all these guys are too hard. This is one of the fundamental flaws with the game, in my opinion, is that it's very, very, very difficult to identify what challenges you can handle. Uh, I think this has been my largest frustration with the game. Uh, that in combination with the fact that the game has no quick save. Uh, so basically, like, easy peasy most of the time, you could just quick save. And in quick saving, you could go take on a challenge and see how tough they actually are, right? Like, you could just go ahead and knock it out real fast, and you're good to go. Uh, there's no quick save, as far as I can tell. And so, since there's no quick save, you kind of just have to, like, manually save, which takes a little while longer. And then once you manually save, you got to run the fight, see if you die instantly or if you kill them instantly. I'm having a really hard time in this game identifying threats. Like, sometimes I can defeat, like, level 18 patrols. Sometimes I can barely handle a level 5. So I've gotten into the habit of just kind of like eyeballing what ships they have and memorizing which ships absolutely like knocked the orbital off the side of my face the last time I tried to fight them. And I've just been using that as a guide point, just sort of like metagame knowledge basically, which I guess is in and of itself kind of an interesting way to play a game. I think these guys are trying to capture me too, dude. I think these free traders are on me right now. I think they want the smoke, man. I'm going back to Silverbloom. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here. I need to get rid of this ship, though. My escort ship kind of sucks. I'm not... He's not aggressive enough for me. He needs to be a lot more aggressive, and he needs to deal a lot more damage. So what I'm thinking I do is I sell him. I upgrade to a bigger ship, which I then retrofit. And then from there... Wait, I got to go back over here? Nah, I was going to say, dude, we haven't even touched that yet. So we could pick up a bronze drake right now. Ah, that's a pretty cool idea, so I'm going to do it even though it costs me a lot of money. And then from there, what I'm going to do is we'll go to the ship merchant and like, yeah, this guy right here looks kind of lined up, dude. This guy looks like he's got like an extra bunch of little chunks right here that can be customized. I am excited. Uh, now I got to figure out how I sell a ship. I actually, I've never sold a ship before, so I don't know how to sell a ship. We're going to have to figure that out. Aha! I figured it out. It took a lot of effort, though. Like, it was complicated. Like, I had to fiddle around with the UI. In case you get stuck on how to sell a ship, I'm going to show you how to do it. You got to go to ship roster. You got to remove them from your line, and then they become an item inside your kind of, like, universal inventory. Uh, in which case, that's when you're, you're now able to, like, throw down. Dude, look at this bronze drake right here, dude. This thing is about to be dope. I kind of want it to be my flagship, dude. There we go, dude. Now it's my flagship. Oh, it's got a giant... Dude, it's got a big gold gargoyle on the front. I love this little model viewer right here. So cool. All right, so now we got to fit this guy. You know what I mean? Like We got we to gotta do something with this dude. Let's look at this guy right here. So he's got a lot of mana drives for flying around. He's got his reaction dynamo. You definitely don't want that to get hit. Okay. I think there's a pretty solid opportunity here. 
to build this thing into kind of like a tough customer. So it's got cannons, and it's got machine guns. I think there's a solid opportunity to add two more machine guns and two more cannons to it, possibly. If you're okay with the cannons being unarmored, you could do a bigger long gun, too. Definitely, I mean, or you could double stack them up if you're like a wild man, bro, and you don't care at all. You could put a gun behind a gun right here. I mean, technically, I could move these cargo rooms down to here, and we could have double stacked guns up there. Who, buddy? What's on the front? Machine guns are on the front? Okay. Whoever built the initial default of this ship is speaking my language. Lots of machine guns. All right, so unfortunately, like, this guy right here, dude... We gotta kind of get, like, wild and crazy with it. Like, there's not really gonna be any other way around it. Like, I think I think this bird needs to fly, man. That's the feeling. That's the vibe that I get. When I look at this ship, I think to myself, like, this is a ship that needs to kill, all right? This is a ship that is deeply invested in the murder of others. But we'll take her out for a spin for a second while I talk about what I like and don't like about airship. Uh, so by and large, I actually like this game a lot. I'm infatuated with it. I like it. There are little annoyances, but nothing so far that has put me off the game. My guess from looking at it is that this game is made by a new team, actually. That's my guess. Like, they seem like they have skill, they have talent, they know how to design things visually. Everything that needs to feel good does feel good, but it's lacking in a few key, like, easy-to-overlook areas that I think just kind of come from experience when it comes to structuring a game. Uh, so the combat is fun. It's punchy, it's customizable, there's loads of weapons to play around from lasers to missiles to port torpedoes to rocket pods to machine guns. Lots of fun things there. The world is alive and feels vibrant. There's always something going on while you're flying around. This, the narrative and the storyline is quite good, even though it's like standard fare. It's voice acted well enough and presented well enough to the player in sort of like a Sunless Sea fashion. Uh, that it ends up being a lot of fun and I wanted to see what would happen next, especially with my cruise storylines. Um, but best of all, like, the game lets you design ships of the line and broadside it out with the enemies, which is exceptionally rare. Most video games go for fighter combat or some kind of conceptualized combat, uh, rather than allowing you to just pull up next to an enemy and unleash 40 guns to a side. And so this game definitely got my master and commander itch tingling. Like, I wanted to play more where there's just something cool about, like, lowering a saber and, like, a hundred guns going off and, like, the enemy ship being knocked into fragments. Like, it's just... I don't know, it's an infatuating, intoxicating feeling, all right? Apparently I was born to be like a 1500s naval man. Uh, a few things do need to be changed, though. The game needs a quest log where it keeps all of your activities and all of your market data. Uh, the pirates that pursue you, they spawn way too early and they harass you way too much. It becomes an annoyance piloting around them all the time because they're way too high of strength for you to deal with way too early in the game. And all you do to inspire that is like you kill a couple of starter enemies and all of a sudden you're like the enemy of their whole naval faction and they're coming after you with like full frigates and things very early on in the game. So that system seems to escalate way too fast. Uh, the UI takes some getting used to. It's not a bad UI, but it's a big, chunky UI with lots of things and lots of details to learn. So it's going to take you a little bit to get the UI down. The controls, when you put the game in 3x speed, they also triple in sensitivity on the keyboard. Uh, ideally, you would want that to stay kind of like the same level of sensitivity because right now it feels very easy to overcorrect and it's all wishy-washy and back and forth and it feels very cheap when you're in 3x mode. But other than that stuff right there, I'm having a really good time with the game. It's a lot of fun. I want to see more, and I want to play more. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we were messing around with Airships Kingdoms Adrift, which I liked very, very much. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but up until then, it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.